Okay, in this video, we're gonna figure out if the sum of n over two to the n, um, as we go to infinity, so like maybe from one to infinity, two to infinity, whatever, um, from some finite number to infinity, uh, we'll figure out if that converges or diverges, and we're gonna actually use the ratio, the root, and the integral tests, um, and it's probably gonna feel like we made a series of poor choices as we go on. So uh, let's take a look. So. I see this and the first thing I think is I'm going to use a ratio test on this because I like using the ratio test and I'm pretty confident that it's going to work. So that would be my go-to on this one. So the first test I'm going to use is ratio test. Okay, for that I need to calculate the ratio of the n plus first term uh, to the nth term. So you do a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n and you let n go to infinity. Since we do that so often, we usually just write um, a sub n plus 1 and then multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n. So it's going to look like this. So rho is the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value. So we need absolute values for the test, but this is a positive term series, so they don't actually make a difference in this case. Um, so the n plus first term is this, and then we're going to multiply by uh, the reciprocal of the nth term. So it's 2 to the n over n. We take this limit, so I'm not sure how much work uh, you might need to show. Uh, you can definitely simplify 2 to the n over 2 to the n plus 1 to just be 1 half, and then I'm going to factor that out. So I get 1 half. I'm going to write this again, um, just to be like super clear. And then that limit is definitely 1. You could use L'Hopital's if you need to, but it's better to just look at it. I mean, it's, you know, n to the first over n to the first is definitely going to go to 1. Uh, so this is 1 half, and that is less than 1, and therefore we can say... Um, that the series converges by the ratio test. All right, so that was pretty quick. Uh, now I'm gonna look at it and say, uh, I see that two to the n. So sometimes when you see uh, something to the nth power, it's a good idea to use the root test. So I'm gonna try that. So using the root test, calculate rho again. So in this case, rho is gonna be the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term. So the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term, which means the absolute values go inside the nth root. So limit as n approaches infinity, the nth root, absolute value of the nth term. Okay, so again, the absolute values aren't really doing anything here because um, and we're going from one to infinity, um, so we're always positive. But uh, I'm gonna break this into like a numerator and a denominator. So I'm gonna end up with n to the one over n but then two to the n to the one over n is just two to the first, so uh, that part's done. But now I kind of have an issue because in the numerator there, I have um, n to the one over n as n goes to infinity, which like maybe is something that you just know, but maybe it's not something you know. Um, and when you look at it, you're dealing with infinity to the zero, right? n is going to infinity, so n goes to infinity, obviously, and then one over n goes to zero. So that's like almost an indeterminate form, so what I'm gonna do is additional work to just check and see what that limit is. Um, it's gonna end up being one, um, but let's like go through the process just in case you've never seen it. So what I usually do is I'm gonna let y equal x to the one over x. So I just change all the n's into x's so that I feel better doing calculus with it. Um, I'm gonna take natural log of both sides. So this is a standard procedure when you get infinity to the zero. Um, this and then I'm gonna bring down the exponent as a coefficient. So I get one over x times natural log of x, but that's just natural log of x over x. Uh, now I'm just gonna introduce the concept, I'm to take the limit as x approaches infinity of both sides. And there's no like noticeable x on the left side, so I'm just gonna work on the right-hand side and see what I can get. So if I look at that, um, if x goes to infinity on the right-hand side, natural log of infinity is infinity, um, and then x obviously goes to infinity. So that's actually infinity over infinity, so I'm gonna use L'Hopital's rule on it. So that's the derivative of the top, which is one over x, over the derivative of the bottom, which is one. So it's the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x over one. Um, if x goes to infinity there, I just get zero. So now I really have um, the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of y is equal to zero. I'm gonna take the limit and move it inside the natural log, which is something you can do for continuous functions, and natural log is a continuous function. Um, I definitely have videos of going through this process, so if you look for those, um, if you're confused by this, you can see some more examples. And now I'm going to exponentiate and get that the limit as x approaches infinity of y is equal to e to the zero. e to the zero is definitely one, so 
the limit is x approaches infinity of y is equal to one. Now I just need to remember that like a way back, I said that y was equal to x to the one over x. So the limit is x approaches infinity of x to the one over x is equal to one. Okay, so let me box off that extra work. Um, and so rho has reduced down to one over two. So this might've been a worse choice than the ratio test uh, because the ratio test I was done like instantly. And here I had to do this whole little extra problem, but I get one half. That's less than one, which means um, that our series converges by the root test. So if I had chosen to use a root test, I would still show that it converges, but it'd be a little more work. All right, let's try the integral test because x over two to the x looks like something I could integrate. I kind of enjoy integrating things. So sometimes I'll use the integral test uh, just for the challenge of an integral, which uh, is probably not a great idea if you're actually taking a quiz or a test in your class, but uh, let's do this. So. First, we, uh, so, uh, we define a function f of x. So f of x is just the nth term, but we replace all the n's with x's. Um, so now we're doing like the sum of f of n uh, is what our series has become. All right, so for the integral test, I need it to be positive, continuous, and decreasing eventually. I need it to be decreasing eventually. Um, so f of x is definitely continuous, right? You can look at that and just see like for positive values, well, two to the x is never equal to zero. So this thing is just always gonna be, uh, it's always gonna exist, be continuous, no problems there. Um, also, uh, I wrote positive. So it's definitely positive because uh, x is always positive and two to the x is always positive. So the ratio is always positive. Um, continuous, I talked about accidentally. And uh, I also needed to be decreasing, which uh, is kind of an issue because I don't know if we can just assert that that's decreasing, which I'm pretty comfortable doing. It's definitely decreasing eventually, but uh, I'm gonna show the work just in case that's something you would have to do. So let's find the derivative of this thing. So it's bottom, derivative of the top, minus top, derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. So the hardest part of that is remembering the derivative of two to the x is two to the x natural log of two. Um, okay, so I'm gonna clean this up. One minus x natural log of two over two to the x. Okay, so the only way this thing could be zero is if that numerator is equal to zero, which would mean that x is equal to one over the natural log of two, which you can kind of work out on paper if you're not sure where that came from. So I'm gonna do a sign chart for this. Okay, so I really only care like to the right of one over natural log of two because uh, I just need to be decreasing eventually. So uh, if you think about it, like plug in, I don't know, like a billion, right? Two to the billion is a positive. It's a very large positive. Um, one minus one billion times the natural log of two, even if you don't know the natural log of two, that's definitely feeling negative. So uh, we're definitely decreasing over here. Um, it's useful to remember the natural log of two is approximately 0.7, which means that uh, one over the natural log of two. So if 0.7 is seven over 10, it's about 10 over seven, um, which is useful because it tells me that uh, my function is definitely decreasing um, decreasing when x is greater than or equal to two, which means I'm just gonna do my improper integral from two to infinity. So let's work on that part. So you can see why this is like a worse choice. I already had to do the work to see um, if the function is decreasing. Now I need to do the work to find the antiderivative of this. So what I'm gonna do is just an indefinite integral, not worry about the bounds, because um, you just end up writing them a million times. So let's do an indefinite integral. Uh, this looks like a classic integration by parts problem. So I'm gonna choose a u and a dv. So you usually wanna choose u so that the derivatives eventually go away if you take them repeatedly, if that's possible. So u is equal to x, dv is everything else. So two to the negative x dx. dv, uh, du rather, is dx. And then v is, I need the antiderivative of two to the negative x, which is gonna be uh, negative by kind of like reversing the chain rule and then one over natural log of two times two to the negative x. Okay, so now we're doing integration by parts. Like integral test, maybe not the best choice, but uh, you do get to practice a lot of skills. So uh, it's gonna be, so this thing is uv, so just multiplying them, and then it's minus the integral v du. So v du, I'm just gonna pull out the negative one over natural log of two. Um, so I have this, and then I just need to do that integral, but I just kind of did that integral. 
of two, the integral of two to the negative x uh, is gonna be again, negative one over natural log of two times two to the negative x. So I end up with this. So there's a plus there because it's uh, minus negative. And then we pick up another negative one over natural log of two and then two to the negative x. And then technically there's a plus c because we're doing an indefinite integral. I'm just gonna factor this to make life a little bit easier. Okay, so we found an antiderivative, which is good because I'm just gonna go straight into the fundamental theorem on that, in, that improper integral. So two to infinity x, two to the negative x dx is going to be equal to um, the limit as b approaches infinity of our antiderivative with b substituted in and then minus our antiderivative with two substituted in, which ends up this. Okay, and all I really need is for this to be finite. I don't need to know the value. Um, so this part is zero because two to the b is gonna go to infinity. Basically the denominator is growing significantly faster than the numerator. You could L'Hopital's that. I think it, it's only gonna take one time, um, but uh, you just know that that's zero. So that converges and that's good because that's all I needed to be true. So that improper integral converges, which means by the integral test that this thing converges. Um, and so uh, we did it, we did it three different ways. I feel like the ratio test is clearly the best choice. Uh, the root test was interesting because we got to do that limit and review that idea. And the integral test was interesting because we got to take a derivative and do a sign chart and then use integration by parts. I feel like the integral test was maybe not the best choice on this. Um, but anyway, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.